Hey everybody, it's Jason with Rotoboss Rotary Attachments. Thanks for joining us on this video. Today, this video, we're going to go over um, making changes to your vendor and machine settings to allow for uh, more smooth and consistent uh, line engravings and fill and line engravings on cups and tumblers and things of that nature. Uh, I want to preface this with making changes to your to your settings you want to do so cautiously and at your own risk because um, they can affect the overall performance and and use of the laser if not done properly uh, we'll go over ways to to mitigate that and, and prevent that here in this video uh, but I just want to make that clear uh, be careful when you're making these changes um, because they can affect the performance and use and potential damage and all that stuff. So not to scare anybody, but I just want to put that out there as a disclaimer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our machine settings and we're going to see all of our different parameters here. Um, the main ones you're going to see initially are your cut, engraved, rotary, and miscellaneous. Um, then down here you'll see your vendor settings. If you click on that, it's going to pop up a window telling you that uh, take precautions because you could damage or or affect the performance and handling and stuff of your machine. You'll click OK. Then it'll open up all the settings below the vendor settings. Um, so once you do this, the first thing I suggest is to go here to save to file. If you've already got a folder set up for for different stuff, um, this is a good place for it. If not, you can create one. I've vectored Rotoboss logos. Um, then I have uh, rotary cup files, which all these cup files would be in there. But I, in a previous video, I just had them for demonstration so I could show. Um, but I've already done this. But you want to save your stock light burn settings. Uh, once you save them, you're going to, or once you create the file, you're going to hit save. And once it's saved, it's in there, and that saves all these file or all these settings that are in this menu box here. Um, I'm going to go over how to change the U slash Y axis. I'll focus on the Y. Um, but for Thunder users, you want to change just the U axis for the rotary stuff. Um, the whole point behind saving that file is if you make a mistake or something, you can always revert back. You don't have to worry about writing all this stuff down or taking pictures or screenshots or anything like that. You can always revert back by going to load from file, hitting your stock light burn settings, and it's going to populate everything back to the original settings. Um, so in this, like I said, we're going to focus on the Y. We're going to focus particularly on the max speed and max acceleration. Uh, I like to put mine at 30 and 30. And what this does is it, it limits the, the speed at which the, the laser accelerates to the max speed. And it also limits the max speed. Um, so when you're making a rotation and a cup stops, it prevents it from slipping. Because uh, if you've had a, a rotary with or without a clamp and you go to hit frame or anything like that, it just spins really fast and it kind of jumps around or jumps off the rotary when you're, when you're doing that. Because when this is spinning, the inertia, when it stops, especially at 3,000 millimeters a second, it's going to max out the capabilities of the, the motors. Um, and then when that comes to a stop, that's usually where you get your slippage. So the slower you can go <clears throat> for your frame and everything else, um, the better off it's going to be as far as preventing slippage. Now, with this here, you'll make these changes. And again, for, for the Thunder users, you'll make your changes right here. Um, and... Also, you'd want to come up here to your cut parameters. You want to lower your idle acceleration. Again, I use 30. I use 30. 
and then one. Um, again, as you're cutting, this is going to um, affect how, how quickly the machine starts and stops and how fast it goes through its transition. You can also adjust the idle speed here. Um, I like to keep them 30. It works for me. Um, but you can find what works best for you. And then once you're done with that, especially if you have the y-axis, is you want to save to file. And then this one, I already created it, but this is a rotary engraving. We want to, want to save it there. And that's going to save all these parameters we just changed. So now you can quickly and easily go between flat and rotary by just going down here to load from file. If we're on rotary, we're going to go to stock, and you're going to see all these numbers just change back to their original numbers. Um, Another thing you can do, especially if you're running off the y-axis for rotary and you get a y-slop error, um, you can go down here and you can, I usually tell people 1,000. So that's going to basically max out your um, acceleration speed, or your travel, sorry, your travel space. So if you only have a, a 400 millimeter bed, which is about 16 inches, and you're doing something, um, this is just hypothetical numbers, but if you're doing, if your bed size is only 400 millimeters, but you're engraving something that needs 500 millimeters, or if you position it in the bed and you reset and your Y axis is already at 300, you don't have to worry about changing that like you had in the past. You just update this number here under your Y axis settings. To 1,000 millimeters, and that'll give you plenty of room. Generally, no matter how big your your bed is. Now, the caveat to this, and the precaution or caution for this is, once you do this, if you save it for the Y or for the rotary, and you're using the rotary, you need to revert back to your stock settings before you close out, because if you don't and you go to restart your machine the next day or whenever, when you go to restart the machine, it's going to try to find that original origin, which was, let's say, 500. Um, so if it's trying to reach 500, but your bed size is only 400, you're going to crash the gantry into the hard stop because it's trying to find it. It's trying to find a place in space that it can't reach uh, physically, so you will have a crash. So that's a very important to pay attention to that if you make this change. Uh, you want to revert back to your stock settings before you and write it back to the machine before you shut everything down. Uh, that way you prevent any damage or issues uh, with that. Um, but other than that, uh, like I said, you can play around with uh, these settings. Uh, put them wherever you want. It works best for you and that you find that that is sufficient to accomplish what you're trying to do, which is to prevent a slippage and be able to do line engravings on cups. Um, line engravings never really recommended, but with making these changes, it is possible to do so. Um, and you can, and like I said, just play with the numbers, see what, see what works best for you, it gives you the best results. The way to test it would be to put a mark on a cup, set your red dot and your origin on that, that line, then do a frame. After you do the frame, if it comes back to that same spot, then you're good. If it doesn't, you can tweak the numbers a little bit more uh, until it does, and you want to do it a couple times just to make sure it's consistent. Um, and then once you've done that, then you just go here, save the file, or to update the file or whatever for your rotary. And then that way you have um, that way you have everything set, you're ready to go, and um, you minimize or completely eliminate the slipping altogether. So with all that being said. Um, I hope this this helps kind of understand how to 
to do that. I know I've mentioned it before in posts and things like that, so I figured I'd do a video. And I've had people ask me about that recently, so I wanted to address it um, while it was still kind of fresh in my mind. And then that way others um, can benefit from this as well. So if you if you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment if you have a comment or question about what we just discussed or if you'd like to see future videos on specific topics please let me know in the comments and that way I can kind of gear these videos towards um, or I can prioritize these videos by what people need versus you know kind of information that I want to put out to people um, like I said this <clears throat> this is how I do it there may be a easier way I don't know but this is what I've used for years this is what I recommend to anybody that asks me. Um, so again, hopefully it helps you. If 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 it does, that's awesome. If it doesn't, please let me know. And if I need to expand or expound on anything, I can I can definitely do that in a future video. Um, so that way we cover all the bases. So for now, uh, thanks for watching. Again. Thank you. Hope this helps and we will see you in the next video.